Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Attention Please podcast now on video. If you like this podcast, kindly like, share, subscribe. You know what to do. So this week, uh, we will be talking about the emerging news from Bengal, especially the Enforcement Directorate having raided the houses of, I would say, houses by proxy because they're not technically in the name of Patho Chatterjee, who's kind of the number three or number four in the Trinamool Congress hierarchy. So he currently is the industry minister of Bengal, and he used to be the education minister. And so the story so far, for those of you who haven't caught it, is that uh, the enforcement directorate, this has been, there's been something which has been alleged and under investigation for quite some time, which is called the SSC scam, which is the school services commission scam. So it's really uh, a test and uh, a way for uh, vacancies in different government schools to be filled. And it has been well known for it for a while now. And it's not just recently that for years that the only way to get in uh, is through bribes and the, the this kind of bribery extends from um, your exam scripts. So for a certain amount of money, you could get more marks. You could have your exam scripts changed. So again, most of it is in the realm of uh, urban legend. And uh, again, one of the things is none of this is new. Uh, this actually predates uh, in many ways this, this entire thing of corruption in terms of placement. And we'll come to that predates the Trinamool Congress by decades. Uh, so Patho Chatterjee has, was called in for questioning and during questioning, he gave up the names of some of his, what the press refers to as confidants, but they're all uh, female confidants. And then that's actually really fueled the story because of the, the, the salacious aspects of the, of, First of all, the, the, the amount of money that has been recovered is mind boggling. It's mind boggling in terms of scandals in Bengal, which used to be on the, at least when I was growing up in the range of lakhs. And even the Naroda scam, which was a scam, which was about a few years ago, where a lot of Trinamool Congress uh, leaders were found on camera to be taking money. Even there, the, the pathetic thing was that the sum of money was in the lakhs, 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs. And as a Bengali, I felt embarrassed that, uh, you know, Bengal politicians sell themselves so cheap. And that kind of is symptomatic of uh, the, 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 the development in Bengal, that while uh, politicians in other parts of India wouldn't even get out of bed, uh, unless you give them 10 crores here we have you can actually go to the ministers and the top top level of Trinamool Congress and just get their favor by paying 10 lakhs 20 lakhs which was embarrassing for us but thank you Partho Chatterjee that embarrassment is gone because now we have crores 20 crores 40 crores being recovered from his his different apartments again not his apartments but apartments by proxy uh, through his female confidants who are apparently many in number again there is a lot of these things are i would say unconfirmed the the, the raids definitely are not because there is um, you know that that is on camera and right now um, the thing is that general congress is washing their hands of partho chatterjee as if oh we had no idea he was doing any of this he did all of this in his personal capacity um, which again i which is of course ridiculous, um, but let's let's. This is the facts of the case. But what's the analysis here? The analysis here is first of all, is that in order to understand Trinamool Congress and their operation and their and the way they raise money, it's important to understand uh, the OG, which is the Communist Party of India, Marxist. As I've said many times in this podcast, as well as in my writings is that Trinamool Congress basically co-opted the business model of the of CPM, except they amplified it. They, of course, increased the scale, uh, but none of what they do is very original in terms of, hey, we haven't seen this kind of corruption before. No, we've seen this. It was actually started by the Communist Party of India Marxist. And what the Trinamool Congress did was they basically acquired they acquired their assets in every sense of the term. It was a hostile takeover, but it was a takeover nonetheless. So when we were growing up, for instance, 
one of the things about the CPM was that um, all of all teachers were essentially affiliated with the CPM. Now, the affiliation was in two, it happened in two places. One was that it was again whispered, not that anybody, there was any investigation that you had to be within the party to get these jobs. Um, again, being in this party meant you had to make contributions, you had to make financial contributions. Again, in those days, I'm talking about the 80s and the 90s, the scale of financial contributions was nowhere close to what has been recovered from Patho Chatterjee's apartment. But there were obviously whispers that you just couldn't walk in, that there was, there was no notion of merit when it came to uh, jobs in government schools. Uh, that was one thing. And second is you had to adhere to the party line. You had to be a card carrying member of the party because of two reasons. First of all, these teachers were the first step towards indoctrinating or the indoctrination rather of the next generation of CPM voters. So it was very important that they were aligned with the party line. Um, that was one thing. And second was that um, teachers were often in government schools were often the ones who were uh, running uh, election booths during election campaigns. And it was very important that th these people, because of uh, the kind of scientific rigging, it's a term used by CPM themselves, at least disgruntled members of the CPM at one point of time, that that's what they did, scientific rigging. But they didn't go and just seize ballot boxes like happened in Bihar. What they used to do was they would would do, do different kinds of challenges to make sure that people went home and people who they knew were not going to vote for the CPM didn't vote. Again, topic for another day, and I've discussed this also before. But the point that I'm trying to say, it was very important for the CPM to keep the teachers of schools absolutely firmly within the party and to keep them as hardcore CPM activists because multiple benefits of that. Firstly, they paid. Secondly, they indoctrinated others. And thirdly, they ran elections. So this was very important for them. So over the years, we've heard, and this has been, a, again, a, a sore point. Unfortunately, the BJP was not able to, and BJP can't. Uh, BJP cannot take on CPM for corruption because, this, because the BJP basically took the disgruntled members of uh, Trinamool Congress who were fired for corruption. Uh, so there's, there was never, even in this last election, corruption was never a big issue. It should have been, but it couldn't have been. If your party is led by Shuvendu Odhikari, who is, again, the, one, of the, one of the linchpins of, of, of corruption in Trinamool Congress, then of course there is not, corruption is never going to be an issue. Though that really remains Trinamool Congress's Achilles heel, I would say. So BJP went with Muslim appeasement in Bangladesh, which again, was absolutely a you know it was not a vote getter at all because you know, nobody cares in in bengal it's corruption which could have been an issue but the bjp was on no firm footing to take on the mul congress on corruption actually the cpm the new cpm guys who were not there during uh, in the 80s and 90s i actually have the have the at least the moral upper ground to talk about corruption um, bjp doesn't so over here what's happened is that you know, the, the raids, you know, money being recovered and crores of money being recovered. And of course, the hilarious, the hilarious, shameless um, line from the Tinamul Congress spokespersons is that we don't know anything and that Mamuda Banerjee has got nothing to do with this. Tinamul Congress has got nothing to do with this. First of all, here's the first question. How did crores of, first of all, these were being stored in the apartments, right? They were not being used. That's important. So before we start blaming Patho Chatterjee, and of course, there is a lot of blame to Patho Chatterjee. First of all, the thing is, he was, he, and he wasn't himself, he was getting his proxies to store this money. So what was this money being stored for? It was not being spent, it was being stored. This is an important distinction. And I think people are not covering in that much. So why was the money there? Obviously, this money wasn't there just for Patho Chatterjee's enjoyment because he wasn't enjoying it, he was storing it. Secondly, how did the money reach Patho Chatterjee's apartment by proxy? Who carried them? This wasn't something which he could just slip in his Punjabi pocket and take in. This is a huge amount of money and jewelry. So this money, obviously this money originated from 
And this is where the tragedy of it is, is the people sold their houses, couldn't get medical treatment in order to bribe. And people will say, I have no sympathy for you because you're bribing people. It's, it's okay to say that, but when you're desperate for a government job and this is the only way to get it, I'm not going to be the one who's going to pass judgment on, on people who have to play, pay bribes. I mean, it, it's okay to take the moral high ground, but really, what, what are people going to do? And this is an assured job. In, in, and that's, that's really the tragedy of Bengal, that because of no manufacturing and because of no industry, that this is really the best that people can do. And all the money ends up in kind of stored in the vault of Partho Chatterjee's uh, apartment by proxy. So first of all, how did the money get there? That's the second point. Uh, that money couldn't have been carried in pockets. That money had to reach there through almost industrial means. So it was really a conduit for money going elsewhere, in my opinion. And the money had been transported there from elsewhere. So that's one, that's the second thing. Again, I don't think this issue is being raised. And the issue is not being raised is because most of it is being buried under the more salacious aspects of, you know, ex-actresses and Partho Chatterjee and, you know, the, the, that kind of sleaze. But that is funny. And I've myself, you know, made social media posts about it. I'm not, not guilty on this. But the main thing is the corruption. The main thing is the systemic corruption here. That should be of concern. So the second thing is, how did the money get there? And thirdly is, why did the money get there without, I mean, people are talking about ED and people are talking about, uh, you know, Mosha, which is Modi and Shah using uh, the central uh, investigating agencies as their, as their arms, as their extra, extra constitutional arm to bring their political opponents to heel. But that may be true. But even keeping that to the side, what was the, what was the Kolkata police doing? There was this amount of money lying around. What there, there was there is local law enforcement apparatus, right? They were unaware of it, or they were pretty aware of it, and they were doing nothing about it. So that's the that's the third thing. And fourth thing is there is no way Partho Chatterjee himself could have pulled this off. I mean, even for even for a Trinamool spokesman to go in front of television and to say this is hilarious. They should be laughed out for saying that, you know, this only Partho Chatterjee was involved. How, who is Partho Chatterjee? Partho Chatterjee's status comes from his position in the Tinamul Congress. It comes from him being the education minister at one point of time, which was made by Tinamul Congress, and him being the industry minister. It's, 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 an, it's a great testament to the industry of Bengal's ruling class, that, that we have this amount of money, while on the other hand, the government claims to be bankrupt, which it is because the government spends a lot of money essentially buying votes with these populist socialist schemes, while there is virtually nothing in terms of tax revenue. So obviously the government is bankrupt, but definitely not the people running the government. They're absolutely not bankrupt. They have quotes stacked up in their in the apartments of their confidants. So that's the incongruity of it all. And the last thing, besides, of course, the mind-numbing corruption, and, and again, kudos to the Trinamool Congress and kudos to the present dispensation that we have gone from lax to crores. Maybe there's something to be said for that. One thing is obviously the silence of Bengali intellectuals in, in all of this. I mean, while this was going on, you had a slew of Bengali intellectuals making a beeline to get awarded at one of these useless bongo bibushon or bibushon or something that Mamata Banerjee hands out really as, you know, small change for Bengali intellectuals who are, you know, is, is they're like influencers, they're like TikTok influencers in, in Bengali politics to not talk about Trinamool Congress corruption. And when elections came, they were all about say no to fascism. So these people who were absolutely not fine with fascism were absolutely silent at this point of time. And why wouldn't they be? They were accepting awards while the ED were raiding the, ho the houses of Partho Chatterjee. So it is so shameless that they were accepting awards right at that moment. Um, so how can these quote-unquote intellectuals claim that they are independent of the ruling dispensation, that they are coming out against the BJP out of the force of their own conscience when they're absolutely 
taking they are absolutely getting paid in terms of respect by the government so that's that and it's it's sad to see that none of them none of them have made anything i mean even the nominal noise on social media they're absolutely silent at this point of time that's one thing and the part of the more the the more terrible thing here is just where the corruption is coming from see i all politicians are corrupt regardless of party there is there's no doubt and when you have so many people fighting so hard to get elected why are they fighting so hard they're fighting so hard to make money getting elected is the equivalent of winning the lottery so obviously people are going to cash out right so we can we can be very purist about it but we all know that all politicians make money and in this day and age money is measured in crores so it's not so much the corruption that is i mean it's it is worth talking about it's worth making memes about but it's not shocking if you're shocked then the problem is with you the main thing is how the money comes see i am okay ish with money being made from industry so you open a new company you do business in a state and you get the 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 ruling party gets a cut that's really how it works all across india um real estate development yes the government gets a cut that's really how for instance real estate was really what fueled corruption in maharashtra at one point of time so even with real estate you understand that there is some notion of development even though with real estate you are actually selling to people inside so it's it's a, it's it's less good i would say than industry or manufacturing coming in and people paying some money some cut money to the politicians at least in when that happens then the development of the state is aligned with the development of the politicians which is okay which is really the best we can get the problem happens when you have something like this when people have to pay in order to get government jobs and not just a little amount a huge amount to get government jobs which they also don't get it's all a scam they didn't get the jobs they just have paid money and they're waiting to get the jobs so when this happens when the government is intent on essentially or sections of the government i should say is intent on cheating their very constituents there is nothing which is happening there is no positive thing that is happening there is no development there is no jobs there is nothing that's when it becomes firstly this cannot go on right this is heading towards collapse but again people are greedy in the short term so i understand that but this to me is dangerous corruption when the money comes from chit funds like uh, rose valley and like sharoda where again the main thing is you're trying to cheat your constituents there isn't anything going on from which you're taking a cut it isn't a tax on development it isn't an implicit tax on development that comes into private pockets no that is fine because at least at that point of time politicians are trying to make the state develop here it's in a matter as a matter of fact it's the other way around the less the development the more desperate people get for government jobs and the more they're willing to pay so this is where development of the state is in the opposite direction of the development of the politicians so this is where it becomes really dangerous so there is an incentive there is an incentive to basically have bad policies because the worse your policies the more people get desperate the more they're willing to invest in things like chit funds and bribe for government jobs and the more money you make of that so this to me really is the story of uh patto chatterji and ed and the money that is being found from his apartments this is the real story the fact that we have reached a stage in bengal where it's not so much the good cut money but we are now in the place of bad cut money which again i think and i am afraid is going to lead to a kind of death spiral and that's exactly what we see in the conclusion there is a huge tragedy here there's a huge human tragedy which i hope that all of us can see it is in the faces of all of these job seekers who have been waiting for years for a job that is never going to be given to them and for the money that was cynically taken from them again 
This is not new. This has happened before but it has been industrialized to a scale that at least I haven't seen before and many others haven't seen in our state. So there is a human tragedy. This is not just money coming from somewhere, from let's say selling bandwidth in the sky. There's almost like a victimless crime. This crime has victims and it is just heartbreaking to see you know, these crores of money coming out from the house of this guy where there are so many thousands of people who are never going to get a job. And this is their money. This is, this is not money which came from rich people. This is money which came from the poorest of the poor, hoping to advance slightly in life. And that's the tragedy. And that's why this is unforgivable. Again, we know nothing's going to happen. Um, either Pastor Chatterjee is going to join the BJP <laughs> at some point of time, uh, because it, it, it's happened. And then he'll come back to Trinamool, of course, after some time, after he's done his penance. Or Trinamool Congress will wash his hands off him and he will spend some time in jail and then come back and become part of the Trinamool hierarchy as it has happened with other politicians. So again, nothing's going to happen. Uh, he's going to, you know, he's going to be shamed a little bit in the newspapers, that's all. Um, and then it will go, go back to normal. So again, but People whose dreams have been broken, who's lost their houses, who've lost their life savings, they're not going to get their money back. So that tragedy is going to remain. Okay, uh, on this downbeat note, let's finish this week's podcast and I'll see you again next week, hopefully. Till then, bye-bye.